This lesson deals with redundant elements. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 2, starting on page 43. Consider a voltage source with a resistance in parallel with it, between terminals A and B. I want to show that you can replace this by an equivalent box between A and B, creating the same effect with just a voltage source V sub S. Now, why would that be true? To be equivalent, we must have the same voltage current relationships for all possible values of V and I. So let's solve for the value of voltage and current in our box on the left-hand side, and then we'll show that it's equal to the one on the right-hand side. What I have to do here in solving equations is to try to do things in one line. So I'm solving for a voltage here. I'm going to make that a rise in voltage and set it equal to the drops around the loop. V is equal to V sub S. I went in a counterclockwise direction there to do that, but this gives me one equation in the unknown V in terms of the known V sub S. Do the same thing for the current. The current's leaving the node, so I'm going to make these two currents enter the node. So the value of I is equal to I sub S plus this current. And this current is the voltage in this direction divided by R. But that's the negative of V sub S. I then is equal to I sub S and then minus V sub S divided by R. I sub S is the current of a voltage source, and that's actually arbitrary or unspecified. It doesn't have a fixed relationship like a resistor does. So if you take a arbitrary number and subtract a number from it, you just get another arbitrary number. And so the current in this relationship then is really unspecified or arbitrary. So you could graph that. The voltage V is equal to V sub S. Suppose that's just a constant. And the current can be positive, it can be negative, and it can be zero. But this is our definition of an ideal voltage source. Recall that if you have a voltage source V sub S, the voltage here, of course, is V sub S, same wires, and then the current is an arbitrary or unspecified variable that will be determined by what you hook up to it. The graph of this, then, would be a fixed voltage V sub S, positive current, or a negative current, or zero. But these two pictures are identical, so therefore they're equivalent. This particular theorem you probably run into every day. This is the idea of plugging something in a wall outlet. You've got a voltage source, and you're plugging a refrigerator, television set, computer, and the voltage doesn't change. You say that R is a redundant element. Now, if there's a property like that for voltage sources, there'll be also one for current sources. And again, this is the idea of duality in circuit theory. Let me state the theorem, and then we'll take a look at how to prove it. If I have a current source with anything in series with it, in this case a resistance R, I can replace that by just simply the current source itself. Now these two boxes are not equal to each other, but they create the same effect at the outer terminals. And that's what it means to be equivalent. So again, let's see if we can show that this is true by plotting or calculating all of the voltages and currents that can occur at the terminals A and B. So again, I'll sign the voltage here as V and the current leaving as I. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take the rise in voltage and set it equal to the drops. Now the drop in this direction, because of the current I, is plus to minus. But you can also write this as plus to minus with a minus I times R. In other words, this drop here is I times R. And flipping the sign of it would give me a minus IR. You can also do what we did in the second form of Kirchhoff's voltage law, and that is the rise in voltage here then we've actually got a rise, or a drop, of a minus I times R plus V sub S. So again, I just do it in one equation. Now this is the voltage across a current source, and that's arbitrary or unspecified. So again, if you subtract a number or add it to an arbitrary number, you just get another arbitrary number. We could just replace this by just simply an arbitrary value or just unspecified. The current I here is simply the current that leaves the node, and the current that enters the node is the current source I sub S. Okay, let's just graph this. Let's assume that I sub S is a DC or constant value. So here we've got a value of I sub S. The voltage across here can be positive, it can be negative, it could be zero. Now to be equivalent to this, we need the same graph or picture. Let's take an ideal current source by itself. The voltage across it is arbitrary or unspecified, and the current I sub S is equal to the current I. So if we were to graph that, we'd have a constant current for a positive voltage V, a negative voltage, or zero. And therefore, these two are equivalent to each other. You may not have run into this kind of an example, but we use this with transistors. Put speakers in series with transistors, which look like current sources. We'll talk more about this in ECE 302. 
here's some examples of redundant elements. 